What is the greatest Christmas song of all time, you ask? Well, it's a tough order. How do you whittle it down? I'll tell you how you whittle it down. I just put 64, the hardest hitting Christmas carols of all time, into a bracket. Single elimination, totally subjective. Let's do this. I'm the classical nerd. Ho, 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 y'all. First up is a Ukrainian folk carol facing off against a song that really has very little to do with Christmas as a holiday. Over the River and Through the Woods is actually more about Thanksgiving. I'm going to give this to Carol of the Bells, but not just because of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra version. It's a real shame that these two heavyweights meet so soon, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. I like the long Latin melisma in Angels, but if you're looking for something that's really fun and really joyous to sing, look no further than the one with joy in its title. I'm of two minds about spirituals. They're either really fun and you don't mind the fact that they're stuck in your head, or they're so uninteresting that you wouldn't lop off your ear Van Gogh style before you get to the 46th and final verse. Thankfully for all of us, Go Tell It on the Mountain is in the former camp. Deck the Halls loses points because it was originally about getting totally drunk, and then they went and cleaned it up. I mean, come on. Good, slow Christmas carols are few and far between, and though I like Rose, it's got a few problems with its text setting. I mean, if you're going to go up to a high note on the word Rose, stay there. I mean, come on. On the other hand, What Child Is This is usually sung to the tune of Green Sleeves, which is an old English folk song about a prostitute. Still, the traditional harmonization of Green Sleeves contains a shift between B major and B minor, and I'm a sucker for a good modal mixture, so it advances. There's no contest here. Not only is O Come All Ye Faithful a classic coming from the Latin Deste Fidelis, but I've also always hated Do You Hear What I Hear. I don't know why, it's always grated on me. Look, I told you this would be subjective. Both of these are very wintry in nature, but Silver Bells is just slow. A little too slow. On the other hand, Sleigh Ride works just as well as an instrumental, which really should be the case since it was originally conceived by Leroy Anderson as an instrumental. The lyrics were added later. Either way, something more peppy really takes the cake here. Feliz Navidad is one of the stupidest Christmas songs that's regularly played. No one asked for that much repetition. I mean, there's almost no creativity in any of the lyrics. It's just the same couple words over and over again. Oh, and now it's in Spanish. Oh, now it's in English. Oh, you know. He doesn't even do a wide variety of languages. You want to know why online shopping is at an all-time high? People are afraid of going into a physical store and their eardrums being assaulted by this or one of the other terrible Christmas songs that are out there. That's my hot take and I'm sticking to it. Good King Wenceslas it is, by default. There are a few different versions of In the Bleak Midwinter, but they're all far superior to Happy Holidays, which is basically the English-only version of Feliz Navidad. From here on out in the competition, I'm going to be using as the basis for In the Bleak Midwinter the Herald Dark version, which is far superior and much more subtle than the Gustav Holtz tune to which it's sometimes sung. Look, I know there are a lot of people out there who like the Coventry Carol, but oh my goodness, have you paid attention to its lyrics? It's about Herod slaughtering all the kids just so we can get a chance at Jesus. I mean, yeah, it's part of the story, but do you really want to dwell on that? Of all things? Yeah, no, I prefer the secular song about some snow-based witchcraft any day of the week. Thank you very much. Ives is one of my favorite composers, and his Christmas Carol, which is the 100th of his 114 songs, is highly underrated, and it's very much unlike any of the other things that he wrote. Basically, it's tonal. I've got nothing particularly against It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year, but it's not good enough to overcome my bias. Ives moves on. One thing that's always bothered me about the first Noel is that no one can really seem to come to a consensus on how the penultimate line is actually supposed to be sung. Still, I like it more, and it's an actual French carol. A literal carol to boot, as the carol is much more precise in its definition than just being a song about Christmas. God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen has much more complexity here. 
The Holly and the Ivy really just isn't bad, but it isn't great either. Both of these are kind of interminable verse-wise, which doesn't really bode well for future rounds, but if I had to pick one to listen to over and over again, I'd definitely go with God Rest You Married Gentlemen. Away in a Manger? Which one? I've heard no less than three distinct settings of this, and only one, the classic da-da-da-da-da-da, only that one works. No one can seem to agree on the exact lyrics either, so it's just gotta get its act together as a song. For this disorganization, I'm gonna have to go with the latter. Sure, Once in Royal David City also shares its tune with some distinctly non christmasy tunes, but it's a nice tune, and like the Ives, it's perennially underrated. The Little Drummer Boy is a bad self-insert fan fiction set to equally bad music. And as far as I'm concerned, the Little Drummer Boy can go rum pum 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 himself. He's got nothing on a little town of Bethlehem and its sweet harmonies and poignant melody. Get that drummer boy out of my sight! I'm gonna be honest when I say that neither of these are particularly strong contenders in this tournament. Jingle Bells is about Thanksgiving more than it is about Christmas. In fact, it's more generically wintertime than anything. Whereas The Twelve Days of Christmas is interminable and no one can seem to remember what the exact order of the last few gifts are supposed to be. There's just so much repetition. I'm gonna give this 12 days for now, but I am not happy about it. Every time I walk into a store nowadays, they either play Feliz Navidad or, even worse, Santa Baby. It's horrible, it's creepy, and oftentimes it's sung in a completely grating voice. I'm not a huge fan of the former, but anything's better than Santa Baby. I want to hit whoever wrote that with a chimney. For the second time in as many rounds, we have somebody wanting to kiss Santa Claus or otherwise pursue a relationship with him. This is wrong, it's weird, and it, it's borderline fetishistic. There's nothing amusing about this, and I'm honestly kind of disturbed. On the other hand, while the prosody of Good Christian Friends has been somewhat altered by its new, gender-neutral incarnation, hashtag thanks Obama, really, it's hard to go lower than kissing Santa Claus in any of its forms. Well, except Santa Baby and the Little Drummer Boy. Hmm, a song that's really kind of assault-y in this cultural climate, or a tune so beautiful that I once wrote variations on it in the style of famous composers' most famous pieces. Yeah, you decide. Oh Holy Night is Gorgeous. The other's radio filler. Next! No one seems to know what exactly wassailing is anymore, so let me tell you. Imagine you and your friends get together and go singing door to door and continue to do this at every single door until you're given warm cider just so you'll shut up. It's also traditionally done in the new year, which doesn't spell good for this contest. Rockin' Around is just as peppy, but it relates to the season more, so I'm gonna give it to that. One is sung by Alvin and the Chipmunks. The other isn't. Yeah, I know, O Tannenbaum just means O Fir Tree in the literal definition and its tune is not the greatest, and it's been co-opted by places like, well, Maryland, but that's no dissuasion! Here's a fun fact. After Felix Mendelssohn wrote the music that became Hark the Herald Angels Sing, he said outright that it wouldn't work outside of its original context, which was something completely different. Also, when Charles Wesley wrote the words to Hark the Herald Angels Sing, he said that it should be sung to something that's a lot slower. They're both wrong and it advances. You want my hot take on Rudolph? He's a stain on the Santa mythos. You heard me. You're telling me you got this reindeer who gets made fun of for being useless, only to be accepted into the group once he's put in a context where he's actually useful, and you're saying this is a good story? All it means is that he has fair-weather friends and Santa just let that slip by without applying the same standards for the children he brings presents to to the very hard-working and presumably talking animals that help him in this very endeavor. Also, I play at my church, and there's this rambunctious little kid who will not stop bothering the post-service choir rehearsals with incessant requests to play Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer week in and week out. There's no Jesus in it! Why are we singing in church? On the other hand, I heard the bells has some really great unusual for Christmas harmonies, and it's not sung nearly enough. Look, 
Longfellow knew it was up much more than Gene Autry did. I'm a sucker for a good, upbeat 16th century tune, even if it's a fake, upbeat 16th century tune. On the other hand, Jingle Bell Rock just seems sort of derivative from Jingle Bells in the title, if not in the actual words themselves. And as we have already established, Jingle Bells is about Thanksgiving. Gosh, can we keep our feasting holidays straight here? Be even worse if we added Canadian Thanksgiving to the mix. These are both very upbeat carols. The former is very demanding of something called figgy pudding. And look, I'm an adventurous eater, but that's not something that I would demand. But it's more actively Christmassy than Christmas simply coming. Christmas is coming talks about geese getting fat and half pennies and like get with the times, y'all. Since when has somebody spent a half penny? For that matter, when's the last time you ate a goose? I mean, I've eaten yak and I've never had goose. Am I just going to the wrong restaurants? Seeing three ships, what is this, some kind of hallucination? Nah, give me the old Tommy French processional any day. This is Christmas related, not just winter. If you're gonna have a Christmas love song, make it about freaking Christmas. Again, when in doubt, go with a more Christmassy one. Winter Wonderland is just about, like, winter. Are you implying that Christmas is always cold? That's Australia-phobic. Check your privilege. We're basically debating which depiction of the same character we prefer, and Santa Claus is coming to town is honestly just flat-out creepy. Yeah, sorry, an old guy knowing where I sleep at night and watching me is really comforting in this political climate. I mean, I'm okay with the NSA doing it, but I gotta draw the line somewhere, and some fat North Pole hermit might as well be the line. Jolly old St. Nicholas gets my vote here. Boy, these are two very different songs. I would say of the three main angel-based Christmas songs of Angels from the Realms of Glory, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and Angels We Have Heard on High, this is probably my least favorite. The tune doesn't fit nearly as well, it's not as catchy, and the tune is used for non-Christmassy hymns. On the other hand, Grandma Getting Run Over by a Reindeer is pretty creative and funny. It's really not what you expect out of a Christmas song. It's so off the wall compared to its subject matter that I have to give it a nod just to advance to the next round, if nothing else. I don't like either of these, but The Seven Blessings is just interminable, so White Christmas it is. Silent Night is the quintessential slow Christmas carol, and it's poised to go very deep into the tournament. We Three Kings is good too, and it brings a hint of exoticism into the mix that you're not really used to hearing in a Christmas song, but that's because it's not really a Christmas song, it's more about epiphany, even though it's sung in relative proximity to Christmas. Silent Night is the real winner here. originally an instrumental, with words added later. I'm not gonna hold that again. Yeah, I'm gonna hold it against it. Look, y'all know that I like my boy Ives, but I'm not gonna let my bias get in the way of a great Mendelssohn tune. Hark the Herald Angels Sing is much more harmonically interesting, whereas A Christmas Carol is just sort of static. It's strange to see a Mendelssohn piece that contains more accidentals than an Ives piece, but here we are. Like I said, Once in Royal David City has a tune that's used in non-Christmassy contexts. In later rounds, that's a real killer. The length and the abysmal repetition of the 12 days of Christmas was always going to be its downfall. Masters in this hall is also quite long, but aside from its chorus of Noels, it's not nearly as grating. It doesn't repeat everything you've heard theretofore again in every single subsequent verse. Plus, I'm not going to indulge myself in the late capitalist self-aggrandizing of the 12 days of Christmas. Who needs 40 golden rings? That's four rings for each finger. And yes, I count the thumbs as fingers. I'm not going to have any of this digit nonsense. When the bracket pits secular against religious, I'm going to have to go with the latter, with the idea that the former doesn't come without the latter. Plus, in a lot of cases, they're just nicer tunes. Same reasoning. What I like in a good secular Christmas song is a little bit of pep. Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas is often sung so slow it depresses me. People out here are already suffering from seasonal depression and you want to make it worse? It's even worse than the original lyrics which are just like mind-blowingly dark. Like nuclear war is impending levels of dark. My goodness people, it's Christmas. 
this is a tough one, but I'm actually going to go give it to Carol of the Bells here. I really like it as an instrumental, and even though neither the original Ukrainian lyrics or the English language adaptation, which is copyrighted, really have much to do with Christmas, O Come O Come Emmanuel is actually much more of an Advent song. Which one's more likely to get stuck in your head anyway? Yeah, I figured. I like O Holy Night, but it's just a little bit too slow to keep my interest over its various verses. What Child Is This is not too fast or too slow, isn't too long, and has some sweet modal inflections. Dorian, bro. Never sang that again. Traditional spiritual versus traditional German carol. I like them both equally, but I'm going to give it to good Christian friends. Why? Do I need a reason? It's my bracket. Here's an interesting matchup between two carols with many different settings. As established, we're going to go with the Herald Dark version for In the Bleak Midwinter, and we're going to go with the John Baptiste Kalkin version for I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. What's the deciding factor here is the original poems. When you dig down into the really obscure middle verses, turns out that I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day is much more topical to the American Civil War than anything else. By default, In the Bleak Midwinter it is. Singing about a fir tree versus an actual carol? Don't patronize me. I'm not the biggest fan of either of these, but I'm going to throw Mariah Carey a bone for releasing the only secular Christmas song that wasn't recorded in the middle of the 20th century. Two slow ones, but Silent Night just pulls it off way better. I'm going to give this one to Grandma on account of the fact that it's a little more inventive than just singing about a living snowman. It lampshades the tropes of our Christmas song expectations. Wenceslas was a real dude from Bohemia who became a martyr at the hands of his brother. Yeah, real nice stuff. That said, nothing in the carol really qualifies it as Christmas. It actually only got this far because it was up against such weak competition in the first round. Masters in this hall is much more of a literal carol than Joy to the World, but that means it's much more structurally repetitive, which is probably why it hasn't caught on as much as Joy to the World. Joy to the World continues its march through the tournament. In the Bleak Midwinter has such a beautiful poetry about it, which unfortunately cannot be said for those who rock around Christmas trees. Look, if it's supposed to be a joyful time, then Major has to win out over Minor. Just common sense. This is where the humor of Grandma's antics falls short. Sorry, ma'am, but it's not going to get you past Silent Night. As I mentioned, the first Noel exists in a few different versions, specifically when it comes to the Noel, Noel part of the refrain. Inconsistency between versions is a no-go in my book, especially when one of the versions is good and the other one isn't. I like the harmonic changes in O Little Town of Bethlehem much more than I do in Hark the Herald Angels Sing. The letter's tune, as established, was originally written by Mendelssohn for a completely different context, and he said that it wouldn't work. If he hadn't said that, who knows? As it is, Little Town wins. Carol of the Bells has advanced thus far primarily on the strength of its instrumental, but it's come across some really tough competition. When pitted against such a strong contender as What Child Is This, it fails to advance. It made a good run, though. Mariah falls short here in favor of something a little bit more timeless. As much as I like the tune of A Little Town of Bethlehem and its funky chords, if the season's supposed to be about joyous celebration, then let's joyously celebrate with the one song on here that actually has joy in the title. Boy, all these are tough. I'm going to go with Silent Night here because it's that rare song that's both slow and not extremely boring. This is hard to pull off in any genre, but especially Christmas music. Midnight Clear has much more nuance and much more subtlety. It's not too fast, and it's not too slow, and it has some nice, rich harmonies. By comparison, Good Christian Friends is quite harmonically static, which is sort of what you expect out of a folk song. Well, none of the tunes for In the Bleak Midwinter were ripped straight from songs about prostitutes, so yeah, that's the deciding factor here. 
Once again, Midnight's subtlety wins out. Plus, look, I'll give it to you straight. I know too many organists to let a handled tune get into the final round. They'll disown me. If subtlety is the theme of these last couple rounds, then the Herald Dark setting of In the Bleak Midwinter far outdoes the subtlety of Silent Night. Silent Night made it a long ways into the tournament, but it's not enough to get it passed into the final round. I love all these. This is so hard. Why am I doing this to myself? Now the final round. In the Bleak Midwinter versus It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. And your boy didn't write three variations on Midnight Clear for nothing. It's a wonderful, wonderful piece, and it's a worthy winner of this little tournament. What, were you expecting an award show? What do you think this is, some kind of network? This is a low-budget operation. So yeah, that's my bracketology. Even though you could make the case for any of the top four, or eight, or even twelve. Merry Christmas, y'all. See you in the new year.